Thank you for joining and being with us. And we would love to make a difference with you. Answer your questions. I'll be answering questions from psychological realm and from Ayurveda realm. And my girlfriend, Kate, she's been growing up around church and Christianity since she was 15. So it will be an interesting view how we're going to have possibly similar and possibly difference of opinion with regards to relationship and marriage so please welcome it's great to have you and we were discussing earlier some few questions about marriage and relationship and we would love to share our knowledge and our experience today together <laughs> hello hello uh, hello let me get my questions sure how do you handle a man who is controlling and always angry? Mm. So be ready because I'll be answering from psychological and our Vedic realm. And Kate will be answering from Christian point well, of I view. I need to get ready to this too. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you first of all. When you're saying that he's always angry, was he angry when you were dating him? Or did he become angry when you got married? Because what I've noticed, and I shared that in a lot of my videos, is most people don't understand that relationship goes through six different stages. And the fifth stage in the relationship called disgust. And during the stage, typically, both men and women, husband and wife, cannot stand each other. That could be the stage that you're in, and that's why he's angry, he's annoyed, he's frustrated, he's disgusted with you. And you might feel the same way with him. That could be one possibility. Or it could be the possibility that you really are married to a man who has an anger problem. And if this is the problem, you have to know that a man is like a bull. You can pull him certain way, where he gonna get triggered with the little things here and there. And that means you don't need to poke the bull. And for example, my husband is very laid back. He do, he's not an angry person, but there's certain things that even our son can do that could trigger him. And so when that happens, I just calm him down. I say, here, I put my son on the side. I take my husband to the other side and I calm him down with gentle, kind and sweet talk but usually women nowadays because of this masculine energy they try to battle they try to prove their point no i said it's going to be this way it has to be this way and man who is already a masculine creature who is already can easily get irritated and if he has a anger issues wow you can put a little bit of oil and this little flame now is on fire and so if your man has this anger, temperament, and issue, you got to learn how can you calm him down gently, kindly, without poking him, without poking him. And again, what women usually does, imagine that this is a red color instead of pink. They're like, oh, bull, come, come, I'm going to battle you. And that's never a good idea. So that's my stand. Work on yourself to figure out how can you calm him down? Because you cannot change a man if he already has an anger issues, especially if he's in his 40s and 50s. But as you're going to start working on yourself, becoming gentle and kinder, and when he gets angry, he's like, it's okay, honey, it's okay. Let's, let me give you a massage or let me cook for you something and you're calming him down. That's kind of my view on the angry man. But what do you think, Kate? What is your view? I totally agree, you know, even if Christianity tells a lot about uh, to be respectful towards husband, but it doesn't mean that you have to, um, like, uh, take this, you know, his anger and just be fine with it. Obviously, you need to do something with it, and this is a good approach to how to handle it, uh, because uh, it you cannot live, you know, in this kind of relationship. We, um, we have to deal with it. And this is a good approach. I love it. Christian approved. <laughs> Christian approved. Thank you. Uh, and I also got a question. How do you handle unmotivated men? My friends, I want to give an example of what one of my girlfriends right now who've been working for the past 10 years, two jobs. And 
sometimes she calls me on the weekends and she said, Alisa, do you remember I used to tell you that my husband started to cook all the time when I come home, he serves the dinner. Well, now when I got raised at work, he's now started to bake pies. Can you imagine a man baking pies? And he's into it. He's now baking this kind of pie, an apple pie and cherry pie. And I listened to her and I say, do you fully recognize that you became so masculine, such a provider at home because she fixes the roof when it's leaking. She pays for the mortgage. She pays for insurance, for the car. But she's like, but he doesn't have a job. I'm like, for, ten, for nine years? It's like, yeah, poor him. I said, well, the more you take care of him, the more you're unmotivating him. And so women, we are the muse for a man. If you are working all the time, you're killing all of his motivation to go provide and protect. And the best advice that I give, start laying down on the sofa, do nothing, pretend, I'm sorry to say that, maybe it's a little bit too much, but in this case, you can say, I have a headache, I'm not capable of working, I don't know, something is seriously wrong with me, I'm exhausted. You know, you gotta figure out how you gotta stop working or working at least part-time. And this is gonna be the best motivation for your husband or your boyfriend to start working or being motivated to make money or do something in life. Because a masculine woman who works a lot takes all of the motivation away from a man. That's the approach of a psychologist and our Vedic studies. But what about you, Kate? What do you think? Well, uh... The Bible tells us to be wise as a dove. <laughs> no, to be kind as uh, to be kind as a dove, but to be wise as snakes. <laughs> ah, I love that. <laughs> and if you be you want to be happy in marriage in your relationship, uh, obviously you need to do something with it too. And um, sometimes uh, it's hard when. Uh, woman is motivated when she has a lot of energy when she has a lot of plans and sometimes while she does all the things she automatically uh, starts to be in the masculine energy and automatically men going like to the woman's energy and so it's harder for him to be like a leader even so I agree that um, we need to, as women, we need to be uh, inspiring our men, but not with like uh, hot, you know, um, replics and yeah, which just, we need to calm down. We need to do our own thing that we must do, you know, and uh, sometimes um, if it's really hard situation, um, Maybe you will write a letter to your man, you know, uh, opening your heart. If it, if it's hard to, for you to tell something or if it's hard for him to like to uh, to hear that, you know, and just open your heart and uh, tell the truth. Tell the truth, but kindly, right? Yeah. And also what comes in mind, I love what you said, because as a therapist, I used to tell my clients, when a child is angry, a parent is angry, or a husband is angry, when you look at his eyes, you can tell him, when you're angry like this, or when you're frustrated like this, I feel scared, I feel hurt. Instead of poking him that something is wrong with him, you can just acknowledge, I get that something is bothering you right now, but I feel really scared and really hurt when our communication goes this way. You can be fully authentic and look into his eyes. Don't try to suppress, run away, be scared and hide from this problem. I used to say as a therapist, face the dinosaur. If you're not gonna face the dinosaur, the dinosaur gonna continue chasing you. So, and I get that he's jealous, angry and controlling. Talk to him. Uh, acknowledge your feelings. Don't try to suppress them. Really good question. But I you. want to uh, point one more thing that yes. uh, I gave this advice to my friend and she wrote a letter to her husband, but she wrote, so for your information, we have this and this and this situation. And if you will not change, it will be bad, really bad. So like it was a letter from financial <laughs> <laughs> to like someone there down. But you have to do it respectfully, with kind heart, uh, and um, uh, working on your attitude, even the way how you speak to your husband, 
it, uh, if you have like a good mood, bad mood or if you are like like screaming and yelling he will just shut down and he will not hear anything anything except your emotions right absolutely and he will be scared by your emotion and he will <laughs> shut the door and will not listen to you so um you need to think through how to tell him that information oh really great point kate because yes a man not gonna hear all of our emotions and if we're putting them down or trying to make them wrong you gotta be very respectful very authentic and very respectful gentle and kind at the same time so he can hear what you're trying to say and that's why when you're emotional just wait just wait maybe next day you can write a letter i love it yeah. thank you yeah what to do with fear of growing old alone well, my friends, it's inevitable that sooner or later we're all going to die. No matter how much we're trying to escape that reality, but every day we're getting closer to getting aged and sooner or later we're going to die. And that's why, my friends, for people who don't have any relationship to God, to higher power, or I know for some it's even hard to hear God and higher power, that's fine, use it as a universe. Uh, if you don't have a relationship, then you will be scared. You'll be vulnerable because you're thinking, well, I'll be 80, I will die, and that's it. But the truth is not it. And that's why we have to be responsible for our life. Because when we die, our soul continues to live. And that's why when you have a relationship to God, you're not scared of death. You're not scared to age. Because all of these fears, it's really... Uh, something inevitable inevitable that you won't be able to change and if you have a relationship to higher power in a every stage of your life you have a gratitude because right now enjoying the stage where I'm building a really close relationship with my husband and my son and my girlfriends and with you and then when I get older he will be a teenager and then he will be an adult and then I'll be a grandmother none of that scares me because I know that behind me I have a very strong spiritual relationship to a higher power but when we don't have that anything that can shift our life we feel insecure and scared thinking oh i will age i will be alone i could lose my job or i could lose my husband or my wife or my beauty all of that it's not gonna stay forever permanent we're changing all the time and so that's why i in my opinion that fear goes away the deeper you have relationship to a higher power this is from vedic standpoint but kate what would you say from the christian point of view i had some moments in my life when i feel felt fear and i didn't know what will be in my future like what i'm gonna be where i'm gonna be where my kids gonna be and but uh, i understood one day god just showed himself to me i was driving a car and I thought I was listening to a song on a uh, radio and uh, the words of the song was uh, uh, that God was before everything, create before any creation. He was already existing. So, um, and just realized, even the sky will fall down right now, like hurricane will come or, you know, apocalypse will <laughs> hit. I will be fine. My soul will be fine as long as God sitting on the throne. And if you uh, have this relationship with God and you trust in Him, you will definitely be sure that He will take care of you. The Bible says that no, uh, God will not leave you or forsake you. And uh, for someone it's just worse, but I realize that it's really, really, really true. And if you... Um, uh, you cannot depend on any person, even you will be married on someone. Uh, your future cannot depend on someone uh, because uh, it's your own future. It's your own soul. You cannot uh, entrust like your whole world, your whole soul uh, in to be responsible for like someone other man to be responsible for you or a woman or whatever. You're responsible for your soul and uh, if you trust God, he will take care, take care of your soul. So this is my credo for life. I will not be afraid, God. Even I have this uh, feeling sometimes, I would just go to God and say to Him and open my heart to Him and uh, like start reading the Word of God or Bible or other books, like holy books you're reading. And it will help you to realize that uh, actually 
no one can control anything in this world. Like, we just live here. And we are so dependable on God. So we have to realize that and just let it go and do whatever we can right now to be happy, to be joyful, uh, to be uh, loving to other people. And if you're scared, if you have this fear, uh, you will not attract anyone. Like no one wants to marry because uh, someone is scared and he wants to protect her. Like for example, the lady is scared <laughs> to be alone and Mel will come, I will protect you, you will never be alone. It's like <laughs> it's kind of bad motivation. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, so we are so far, Ayurveda and Christianity goes hand by hand. 